Alright, so throughout this video, I might sound a little bored, but that's just because I'm a little sick. It's not because I'm actually bored. Anyway, uh, so manganese is a transition metal uh, right before iron, and um, it is mostly used um, in steels, and it has two major reasons that it's used in steel. One, because alloying it with steel improves the hardness of the steel. And two, because if there's any sulfur in the steel, which is actually pretty common, uh, when manganese reacts with the sulfur, it makes manganese sulfide, which has no effect on the steel. So the reason it's used is because when, if, or if it weren't used, iron would react with the sulfur, making iron sulfide, which makes the steel quite a bit more brittle. So those are the two reasons that manganese is used in industry. Um, and it doesn't have that many other uses. So I'm going to talk about what I'm going to, the experiments I'm going to do with it in this video. I'm going to, not surprisingly, explore its rich aqueous chemistry and show its different oxidation states and different colors that they form. I'm going to start with potassium permanganate, which features manganese in the plus 7 oxidation state, and it's a nice purple. And then we'll progress, uh, turning, converting the permanganate into the uh, green manganate plus 6 ion, then into the hypomanganate uh, plus 5 ion, then approaching uh, stuff from the other direction, I'm going to start with plus 2, uh, showing that how that is kind of pinkish, um, then going to plus 3, um, uh, making manganese triacetate, which is basically the only uh, both water soluble and uh, stable compound of uh, manganese in the plus 3 oxidation state that is easily made. Um, and then I'm going to show manganese dioxide, which is, has manganese in the plus 4 oxidation state. I would show, I would like to show soluble manganese four plus compounds, but I couldn't find, but there really aren't any um, easily made ones or easily purchased ones. All right, let's get to the experiments. The most common chemical featuring manganese in the plus seven oxidation state is potassium permanganate. As the solid form, it's an unassuming blackish powder, but in solution, it is a beautiful pinkish purple color. Here I am pipetting some into a test tube full of water. Now I'm not going to show you how you make potassium permanganate because of the simple fact that it's very, very common and you don't have to make it. It's actually the starting point of a lot of other oxidation states I'll be showing you. So there is potassium permanganate solution. Okay, so to get manganese into the plus 6 oxidation state, the best way is to get the manganate ion. The permanganate ion is MnO4 minus, and the manganate ion is MnO4 2 minus. So, the manganate ion only exists in pretty alkaline conditions. So what I'm doing here is I am dissolving some potassium hydroxide in water. Now, it's uh, now I'm going to heat it up a little bit because the reaction takes place better uh, under higher temperatures and also more potassium hydroxide dissolves under high at higher temperatures and therefore it's more alkaline at higher temperatures. All right, here I am heating up the, the sample and you can see that the there is still some cloudiness, which means that there's so still some undissolved potassium hydroxide particles. But here you can see that the, uh, all the potassium hydroxide particles have disappeared and it is a clear solution. So I'm now going to take some concentrated purple potassium permanganate solution and I'm going to add it to the top of the test tube. And you'll see that right there I've already added some. It's a layer of green, based, really dark green. So you can see I'm adding purple and then it's immediately turning green. So here I am mixing mixing the, the test tube, the solution up a little bit, and you can see it's just, it's this really, really dark green. So that's the manganate ion. I'll dilute it a little bit so you can see it better. All right, so here's the more dilute uh, manganate. You can see it's a really nice green. 
Now, the Porbeau diagram for manganese says that the manganate ion only exists in fairly alkaline conditions. So if I take this manganate and I add a couple drops of acid to it, uh, let's see if there is any kind of a color change or, or what goes on. All right, so watch for any color changes to add the acid. There. Already you can see there is a hint of purple in the new color, um, and there is actually now some brownish, there's pink. So some of the manganate reverted to permanganate, which is why you see purple. A lot of it decomposed into various oxides of manganese, such as manganese dioxide, and that's why you see a kind of a layer of a, of a precipitate there, uh, an insoluble precipitate. Now, the reason it, you don't see very much is because the colors of the other compounds are extremely intense, and this solution is actually extremely dilute. But there is a, a slight precipitate. So that's what happens when you add acid to the manganate ion. Getting to the uh, plus 5 oxidation state of manganese, the hypomanganate anion, is extremely difficult. You need extremely alkaline conditions, much more so than for the manganate ion. So here I am taking uh, a saturated solution of potassium hydroxide and pouring it, and spilling a little, over potassium hydroxide crystals. So I have a saturated solution over more crystals. So this is going to be very alkaline. What I am now going to do is add four drops of potassium permanganate, this, the purple stuff you see at the top. It's now turning green. And I'm going to mix it up. And you can see uh, some of it's green, some of it's purple. It's going to turn green pretty, pretty quickly. Now, at this point, I'm going to start to heat it up a little bit just to make sure that it's all converted to the manganate. So at this point, you're going to want to replenish the crystals that you first added and that uh, dissolved. And you're going to actually want to add quite a bit more this time, because you want to make a kind of a lattice of potassium hydroxide that will trap some of the solution in it. The reason for this is because the hypomanganate ion is extremely, extremely unstable. And the minute you form it, it'll decompose if it's in contact with manganate, with dissolved oxygen in the water, or with oxygen from the air. So you need to trap it in this lattice of alkalinity. So the next step is to add uh, a few milliliters of concentrated sodium sulfite solution to the bottom of the, the very bottom of the test tube. So here I am adding the sodium sulfite. The reason you want to add sodium sulfite is because it's a mild reducer that'll reduce the manganate down to hypomanganate. Now you want to add it right to the bottom of the test tube. And what'll happen is I'm forcing some the top part of the solution out. And it's converting a lot of the manganate to hypomanganate. Most of the hypomanganate created immediately decomposes. And that's the precipitate layer you see. But some of it below the precipitate layer is now shielded from the air by the lattice of hydroxide and by the precipitate layer itself. And as I heat it, you will hopefully be able to start to see a layer of blue. And that's because blue is the color of hypomanganate. After a little more than a minute of heating, you'll see there's a green layer on top and a blue layer on the bottom. It's not very bright blue. I had some better attempts when I wasn't trying to fuss with the camera while doing it. So I'll now show you some photos of those more successful attempts. All right, here's a pretty successful attempt. Now let me explain all the different layers. The top layer is the manganate, uh, is manganate ion, plus six. The middle layer is all the decomposition products, all the insoluble decomposition products of the hypomanganate. The second to the last layer, second to the bottom layer, is the hypomanganate itself. And the bottom layer is uh, potassium hydroxide. So that's, that's why it's white. 
Here you can see a really nice side-by-side -side comparison of hypomanganate to manganate. The two, the two plus oxidation state is manganese's most stable oxidation state and the easiest to get to. All you have to do is take manganese metal and add a strong mineral acid, such as hydrochloric acid, and it'll oxidize it to the plus two oxidation state, liberate hydrogen gas, and make a manganese salt. So here I am adding hydrochloric acid to manganese powder in a test tube. Um, it, it, the reaction is actually quite violent, and uh, the result um, you'll see is makes a lot of hydrogen gas, bubbles quite a bit, and uh, I'll cut to when the reaction is over. You'll see that the end solution is a really nice pink color. So there we go, manganese 2 plus. One of the only stable and water soluble compounds featuring manganese in the plus 3 oxidation state is manganese triacetate. And making it is no piece of cake. It's quite an involved process, and I'm going to now show you the step-by-step -step of how to make this very interesting and colorful compound. To begin, add, get 4 grams of manganese powder. Then add hydrochloric acid. You want to add more than the stoichiometric 7.17 grams of 37% hydrochloric acid you'd think you'd need, because I guess too much uh, boils away. All I know is I tried adding a stoichiometric ratio and not all the manganese reacted. So just add enough until all the manganese reacts. You should have manganese be your limiting reagent and just have a little excess uh, hydrochloric acid left over. That's fine. After all the manganese has reacted, the solution will become a nice pleasant pink color. Um, at this point, you want to get the manganese out of solution so you uh, into something insoluble. So you need to react it with 14.5 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate, which will make the insoluble manganese carbonate. Uh, let the precipitate settle and decant off the uh, liquid on top and wash it several times with water. Then uh, t put it in a round bottom flask, this is a bit overkill, and add excess glacial acetic acid. I'm adding about 15 milliliters, although you can add more, just to be sure. Then begin refluxing the solution for about half an hour or until the solution turns pink. After it turns pink, you can start, you can uh, open a hole in the stopper and let uh, the vapors uh, escape. So boil it down to a very thick consistency and then add a very small amount, just like half a gram or less, of potassium permanganate. You want it to be, the, uh, the potassium permanganate to be the limiting reagent. It's going to oxidize the uh, manganese 2 plus to manganese 3 plus, but this will only happen with the addition of excess uh, acetic acid. Add about another 15 mil because you then need it because it converts from it turns to um, manganese triacetate instead of manganese diacetate, so you need more uh, acetic acid. Then uh, start refluxing the solution, and I've got a gram condenser just to help with the reflux. After all the solution boils away, after you're done refluxing, the powder looks like this. Now this also has some insoluble uh, manganese dioxide, so we'll put in solution. And now you can see the insoluble manganese dioxide has sunk to the bottom, and you see the really nice brownish color, uh, brownish red color of a solution of manganese triacetate. There really aren't any soluble manganese 4 plus compounds, but here is manganese dioxide, a non-soluble manganese 4 plus compound. You can see it's kind of a brownish color. Now, if theoretically there were a soluble compound like this, then it would probably be blue when in solution. 